Good morning. Welcome to the Windsor Star News Cafe. I'm Don MacArthur here with Dylan Christie and uh, our special guest uh, from Ward 7 where he's running, Angelo Mariani. Uh, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, good morning good and morning. thank you. Welcome. Okay, um, so the first thing, you told us off camera here you've knocked on 6,000 doors already. Like, yes. Power to you and uh, what are the residents of Ward 7 telling you? Uh, what the families are telling me uh, first and foremost uh, is what they've been telling me in the last uh, two election campaigns that I've had and that is uh, that th the most important thing for our city is first job creation and economic diversification followed by our infrastructure, our roads, our sewers, our parks, our dedicated bike paths and third our taxes and utility costs. Those are the main issues that uh, residents want us to focus on and, uh, and keep in line and beautify and in improve upon. Okay. Excellent. Uh, now of course a lot of the residents probably know you already. Uh, you did run in the by-election in uh, 2013. Uh, you almost got in. Uh, there was a difference of 52 votes between you and uh, current Ward 7 Councillor Eric Kuzmerchek. Uh, it was a close race. Uh, On the last ballot, this thing was neck and neck until the last ballot. That's right, yeah. That uh, 12th poll was just a uh, tie at 10-40, uh, 10-40. Yeah. So was there any chance, any time where you, uh, you considered not running again, uh, having just got out? Did you... Was there ever a time where you just thought maybe... Oh, no, no, no. In fact, that even gave me more energy to uh, want to do this. I, I, this is something that I'm very committed to. It's not something that I, I'm going to give up. I mean, and that's sort of uh, what small business has taught me. There's times in small business where you have a challenge, but you don't give up. You don't because you believe that you can actually improve, uh, improve your city, improve uh, the quality of your product. So uh, that's part of the entrepreneur in me. The entrepreneur does not give up uh, on our city or on our businesses. Well, we should mention that you are a business owner. You own Mel Coffee Bar downtown Windsor. That's right. Yeah. So, how long has that been open? That's been open for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're one of the longest uh, hospitality industry businesses in the downtown core. They brought absinthe uh, to the core. Uh, uh, yes, we did. We, and uh, and a fine cup of coffee. And a great cup of coffee with uh, you actually. It's not a drip maker, right? It all comes from the. the oh, that's right. Machine. We use yeah. a, a French press. We did our research, and the best method uh, that we've learned. Uh, for making coffee, and this is for everyone at home, is by using a French press. You never want to boil your water. That uh, breaks down the, uh, the caffeine and the flavor. Okay, it's a very cool place. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a hub for artists uh, and intellectuals, and you've done a lot of good uh, for the creative side of the city. And in terms Thank of you. losing elections, man, just think about Abe Lincoln. That guy lost a boatload, and then he became one of the most uh, famous presidents in U.S. history. So losing an election is, uh, doesn't mean you can't uh, win in the future. Um, but because you ran in 2010, yes. you came in second, and then yes. of course Percy Hatfield moved on, and there was a big discussion whether or not council should give you that seat as the, the second place finisher. I actually advocated pretty fiercely for that. I, I thought we could save uh, the cost of a by-election. Instead, the by-election was held, and boom, uh, you lost by 52 votes. Uh, so good for you uh, for keep uh, you know going at it. And uh, what are some of the unique issues uh, in Ward 7? I mean, you talked about curbside appeal uh, before when we, when we were off camera, and. Flooding? Is Ward 7 hit by flooding like everywhere else in the city and county? You know, September 10th I was campaigning uh, in East Riverside and uh, it was just off uh, an area off East Riverside. I won't mention the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, four of the homes that I went to had flooded basements as I was campaigning. And uh, when you talk to a resident and they're sitting in their basement and they're watching a puddle develop, imagine the anxiety that you have realizing that that puddle can actually be knee high within an hour or two. So, I mean, that's a real concern. It really is, and it, I think it has to do with a lot of the assets that we have in our community, uh, our pumping stations, our, our our infrastructure. And what we have to do is really review that pump, uh, those assets, and make sure that the, they're all up to par and that they're work, they're in good working order, so that we can prevent this problem from happening. And it's a serious concern, Don. I mean, I saw your your update. You were yeah. you were flooded. I mean. Everything, everything just goes out the window at that point in time. And You're, it is scary. Water coming in, it's like the shining, and you don't know what to do, and uh, you try to get it down the drain, and you put things on high ground, and it's scary stuff. It really is, and, you, you know, you lose those family memories. Uh, I've, we were a victim of flooding, and uh, listen, I, I kept my, uh, my projects from grade 1 to grade 7, and they were all destroyed. So, I mean, uh, yeah, so we have to prevent that. We have to maintain the assets that we have in our city and make sure that uh, we can solve this problem before it happens again, or at least uh, correct it as much as we can. Okay, uh, you talked about Ward 7 earlier uh, off camera as the gateway. Yes, yes, okay, so a lot of people, when they come to the city of Windsor for the very first time, we only have four east-west corridors. The first one, uh, Riverside Drive, Wyandotte, Tecumseh, and East Row Expressway. Uh, many, of, uh, many of the Canadians or people who are coming to our city for the first time, newcomers, uh, will get off on Manning Road, and they'll come across uh, 
uh, they'll come down to Cumsey Road and they'll come into into Windsor. I think what we have to do first and foremost is we have to improve uh, Tecumseh Road. This is uh, one of my key pillars of my campaign and I believe that it should be switched from a four lane to a, a six lane dedicated left uh, right turn lane similar to what we have between Lozon and Jefferson but at the same time what we need to do is we need to improve the curbside appeal. We have to look at Windsor almost as if it is a product. And if you want to sell a product, if you want to sell your house, what you have to do is you have to make sure it looks good. So when people are coming in, there's a lot of fences that are sort of, uh, they don't look so nice. There's, there's students walking along the road, families are walking along the road. That really doesn't give a good image of Windsor, the first impression people get of Windsor. So what we need to do is, first and foremost, switch it from four lanes to six lanes with dedicated right-left turn lanes, especially around Robinette, there's, that's a challenge in itself. Uh, in front of those fences, what, uh, what I'd like to see uh, done is a sound barrier placed right in front of those fences. Now what that sound barrier will do, if you talk to the residents of Atwater and Forest Glade, their biggest concern is noise pollution uh, from the trains and from traffic. So that will help their quality of life improve and also beautify the area. The ditch that is in front of that sound, uh, that sound barrier, let's make it into a bike path, a Ganacho Trail type path along there. Uh, what will happen then is uh, not only will you beautify uh, and uh, improve the curbside appeal, it will also become a, a, a business or an economic generator uh, for that area. The majority of people who are coming down Tecumseh Road live in Tecumseh, Lakeshore, Bell River, and they're going to the big box store. Yeah. The big box stores in Lo on Lausanne and Tecumseh. When they're coming down, any business person will see that here's the volume of customers coming down this road businesses will start to locate on the other side of the street. The area will become, um, will become more dynamic, will become more appealing. You now as a newcomer coming into the city, what do you see? You see a, a beautiful uh, pathway, you see a quality of life issue, you see people walking, families walking, students walking safely, and you see businesses on the other side. And that is uh, very attractive. Uh, to investors, to newcomers, and I think we really should put our best foot forward. We should look at Windsor as if it is a product, and how do we sell this product? How do we uh, get more business investment? Because what we need to really do is increase our tax base, and we're going to do that by, by improving that curbside appeal. If you want to sell your house, make sure it looks good from the outside. If we want to sell Windsor, we have to make sure that our roads are smooth and safe, but we have to improve that curbside appeal. Okay, uh, let's talk about, uh, now switch gears, a little mm. skirmish that happened in the, the Facebook uh, comments. Uh, I love this one, it's a great little tale because uh, when uh, Eric uh, ran against you uh, the first time, uh, he um, didn't live in the ward uh, and uh, he won the seat and subsequently now he rents some property in the ward and there was a bit of a dust up uh, in our Facebook comment section, Bill, and right about... Uh, yeah, well because, you're, yeah. you comment regularly on our site and we love you yeah. for it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, no, he, I guess, Eric made some comments saying that he meets with uh, residents regularly at a Tim Hortons, right? And then you just pointed out right. uh, that there actually isn't a Tim Hortons within the boundaries of Ward It's Tecumseh. on Banwell Road. It's in Tecumseh. Yeah. So he's meeting with uh, uh, the Ward 7 residents in Tecumseh, spending his money in Tecumseh instead of like a, a coffee shop or eatery in Ward 7. And, and nothing gets of, past Dawson Chen. So, of course, he picked it yeah, up. Yeah, DC and, Chen was on it. Yeah. No, DC's actually, yeah, I like his report. And DC's oh. cool. DC's very cool. Well, exactly. So, so about that, I mean, I know you, you're, you're running a very positive campaign, but, mm. but, but just address this. There, there was this skirmish. I mean, is it okay that he's spending his money? Or, like, how, how does that all work? Or, or have you come to peace with, the, with it now? You know what? At this point in time, uh, I don't really want to. I've come to peace at it. But what we should be focusing on on our community is another concern that I have, and that is our, uh, our increasing senior population. And uh, what's happened is we're, we're marketing Windsor as a retirement community, but at this point in time, we don't have the amenities which are necessary to properly give our senior security. So what we should do at this point in time is we should use our community incentive programs. We should really focus on uh, creating a, a friendly environment for our seniors, uh, try to attract more doctors, more health professionals, uh, more geriatrics, uh, more amenities, which would include uh, safer bike paths, and uh, Tim Hortons and, in Ward Seven. Uh, Tim, which yeah, there is Tim's, going to be one. There is one. Ward 7, yeah. There is going Ward to be a back. Tim Hortons at Ward Seven, I believe, at uh, Forest Glade Drive. Well, and then I better Road. like you better come on home when, well, when that happens. Uh, you know, that's not important. What's important is is the residents of Ward Seven. I understand it makes it makes great uh, newspapers, but uh, you know, this is. Uh, 
I only have a few minutes here, and I think okay. I really no, want to address fair, yeah. the, uh, the points that are, are really resonating uh, with our community. And we have a senior population that does not have the amenities. I tell you right now, in about 10 to 10 years, some people will even say now, we're going to have a crisis, a major crisis. Our baby boomers are going to be in their 90s. We're marketing our city as a retirement community. We do not have the amenities to properly service our seniors. As a council, we need to address that. We need to get ahead of that curve and make sure that we have these amenities. What do we need by amenities? Amenities we need, we need to attract doctors, we need to attract uh, health professionals, we need to improve our transit, uh, okay. and we need to improve our, our parks, make sure that our parks are clean and safe. We need to improve the quality of life for our seniors. I mean, these people worked all their lives, they paid into CPP, they've, they've contributed to our society, they built our society, and at the very end, now they're finding themselves in desperate needs. So for me, I'm going to be an advocate for our seniors. I'm really going to make sure that our seniors have the amenities that they need, and uh, quite frankly, the respect that they deserve. Awesome. All right. Well, That's we're in the stretch of the campaign here. Yes. Uh, there's less than three weeks. Uh, what do these final 20 days, uh, how do they look for you? Uh, what are you going to do uh, in this home stretch? Uh, well, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, and that is uh, knocking, uh, knocking on uh, all our homes and our, our families and trying to engage as many families as I can. I believe, uh, you know, it's really about uh, what I'm hearing is, you know, their concerns and there's, it's very rewarding to go in and actually engage the residents because only then do you really hear the neighborhood concerns. Each, con each neighborhood has their own particular concern. Uh, Forest Glade uh, has its concerns with uh, some flooding, uh, East Riverside has its concerns with some traffic calming that needs to be done. Uh, but uh, I'm going to continue on just knocking on doors and just trying to get to uh, as many homes as possible. I still have about uh, 3,000 families to meet and uh, hopefully I'll be able to meet those 3,000 families in the next 21 days. So after this, I'm going to go knock on some more doors. Okay. I just want to say that years ago, uh, long before he was running for council, Angelo was in council chambers every Monday night uh, when I was live streaming it, uh, watching the debate. So he's politically engaged, if it, even if he hasn't been on council. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, course, doing yeah. this. Uh, a lot of residents, you know, they at this point in time, they don't hear uh, from the candidates, especially from the wards. So what you guys are doing is a great service. And uh, thank you for uh, engaging uh, our families and, and informing them about uh, the options that they have in this upcoming election. Okay. Uh, thank you, Angelo. We're in the Windsor Star News Cafe. Thanks.